this is a bit of a sleeper card because it's like it's between UFC London, which is like a pay per view, and a pay per view. I'm on Topology, and I've got Luis Saldana against Bruno Souza first. What are your thoughts on this one, Jamie? Well, I like Luis Saldana. Yeah, he's a very slick, diverse striker. Well, he just seems to have a bit of a, a, a more, like a wide range in his game, especially mm. his striking game. Anyway, yeah. And every time, every time I've watched him, I just find him a really entertaining person to watch as well. Um, he does leave himself open a little bit. I thought. Yeah, I mean, Austin Lingo always does find your chin mm. if, if if you do kind of leave you... It, it, I mean, the thing is, he, Lingo just pushed forward so much that Luis Saldana didn't have enough pop in his punches to really slow him down. Like, when when you've seen him... I mean, on the uh, Contender Series, when he fought Murdoch, that front kick to the face was was very, very slick. But that's like a... That's a very, very rare kick to land. You know, he throws it a lot. He usually throws it to the body. My, my concern with him in this one is that he's against someone that's like another... I mean, Souza's like a karate style, isn't he? Mm. He's like kind of hanging outside, yeah. and like leaping in with a one-two. Like that Wonder Boy kind of, yeah. Just yeah. Like kind of side stance, yeah. Yeah. Like throw the, he doesn't use the side kick as much as. No, he, it's, it's pretty much a one-two. Yeah. Like that's pretty much what he does. But something I did notice when he fought, uh, what's his name? Hang on a minute, I'm going to pull it up now. Bagdasarian, Melsic Bagdasarian. Like, I actually looked at the stats for that one because for me it felt a lot closer than the the stats have it. Like the stats have him have um, Bruno Souza being outstruck quite considerably. Yeah, I've got it pulled up here. So uh, significant strikes for Bagdasarian was seventy five, and Bruno Souza was forty six. But like I thought, a few times he he looked he looked like he was landing really good, meaningful mm. shots, and I don't remember anything really landing that that troubled him too much. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I don't know whether it's like his style's difficult to score because I it's a bit like Machida. That. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like Machida's like that. Like, I always, I always, this is a point I've made before, and it's something that I always try to keep in mind when I was training or when I'm like, like talking to other fighters. Like, you can be a guard player, like Paul Craig, for example. Paul Craig is a great, great guard player. Unfortunately, though, in the judges' eyes, you're losing until you win. And it's and it's the same with counter striking. Like Machida was always on the back foot, but even if he was sometimes even if he was picking them off and moving and not getting hit too much, sometimes the judges would score it against him because the other opponent was pushing forward. Right. And that's that's my concern with Bruno Silva is sometimes he like the judges might might overlook some of the really clean shots that he's landing because he's in bam bam and then back out and moving away and it doesn't necessarily look like he's landed cleanly. But like if you watch like I watched that one I watched it double speed and then I watched it half speed. Right. You know what I mean? Because I, I kind of, I was interested to see what, what I saw differently if I watched it the two speeds. Is it like the, you know, like Mads's style, that Philly shell? Good point. Yeah. Like it looks like you're getting hit, but you're not. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Robbie Lawler. Same yeah, yeah, thing, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Like Robbie Lawless will stand against the fence. Well, he's southpaw, isn't he? Stand against the fence and just roll stuff off his, off his head and his, and his shoulders and stuff. Like James Tony was was one that was famous for that style, and it's it's a really difficult style to do. Mayweather does it really well. Mm. Like you'll see that lead elbow kind of coming up. In fact, um, Brian Ortega does it as well. Right. And if yeah. you watch that first elbow that he clips um, uh, Frankie Edgar with, that's actually he's actually a guard position. He, he lifts the elbow okay. up and cracks him with it. It's quite nice. That's cool. Yeah, very mm. much so. It's a difficult style to score because it still looks like you're getting hit, even though you're like deflecting a lot of the shots. Like it's a useful style to use if you know you're going to get inside and knock them out with a, with a couple of punches. Mm. Um, not a good style for me because I was never that kind of fighter. You know, Paul Daly could have done that one really well because he's a naturally really powerful puncher. You know, like um, Robbie Lawler again suits his style because he's a naturally powerful puncher, so he can use it to like take the risk of walking inside and taking ten shots to land three that's going to clean their clock. Yeah, yeah. I, I I'm kind of split down the fence on this one because I. Cause I because the thing is, like Bruno Bruno Sosa, Bruno Sosa moves very very quickly through uh, through range, and there were, there's a lot of time when Luis Saldana is kind of standing on one leg and like, I, I just I just feel like Bruno Sosa might might catch him standing upright a bit too much, he might yeah. keep pinging him with that one too. Well, the the one thing I noticed about Saldana as well, I think what fight was it against Griffin, Jordan Griffin? Mm -hmm. He was smashing those low kicks as well. Yeah, and I feel like with um. Bruno's style, 
like quite heavy on the lead leg if he can just keep chipping that away you'll just slow him down and yep that was my thinking anyway That's what, what he could um like take him take him out with like yeah. low kicks yeah that's a good shout. Mm. I mean, that's certainly going to change his, his speed covering distance, his ability to move forward. Let me have a look at the uh, the the tail of the tape for these boys. So, ah, uh, so but I mean, both they're both tall for one forty five, five eleven and five ten. So Saldana's got a one inch height advantage, but a three inch reach advantage. Yeah. Yeah, I like Saldana. I think I just think he, he he's in. Uh, I find him an entertaining fighter to watch as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think it's very close. I think like Bruno, like, so what's the fight? What's the difference in fight? So there's five wins and five losses difference. So there's a 10 fight difference in Saldana, but it's like a 50-50 kind of. I could very much see Bruno Souza's next 10 fights giving him the same kind of record. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like I could see them kind of falling into the same rhythms and stuff. I, I, I'm, I'm going to pick Saldana as well. You're leaning towards Saldana, right? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm gonna pick Saldana as well. I do agree. He's got a more varied style. I do like that front kick up the center for someone that does rush forward very quickly. He hit um in his contender for the Murdoch. He hit him once, and then he hit him <laughs> twice with it as well, like just to make sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just to make sure. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a good one though. Yeah, like, yeah. It's so, good to, Souza yeah. seemed to seem to kind of melt Bagdasarian's uh, head for a minute because he's of how he moves he was he was like a bit like couldn't get a couldn't get a proper target on him difficult guy to deal with 